Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll show you how I've made these carbon fiber tubes using 3D printed molds. So the molds were printed on my Ender 3 S1 and I'll take you through the steps of finishing these molds to make them able to start producing parts with carbon fiber, for example. So I'll be using braided sleeves and I'll show you all the tips and tricks into this tutorial video. So to start with, the prints were done on my Ender 3 S1 using Additive Heroes um, Power PLA. So it's a stronger PLA, so it's more like, like ABS features, but as easy as printing PLA. If at some point you think you like this video, make sure to leave a like, like, subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of future videos. So as this is 3D printed, obviously you will have some layer lines. So to make the two molds like fit together well, I've just flattened the top side uh, with some sanding paper and my permagrid uh, file just to make them as flat as possible. Then I've added some spray release to the bolts, not to the, uh, not to the nuts, because I'll be adding these bolts into the mold as a feature to be able to add some side plates uh, that you'll see later on in the video. So I've added some double-sided tape to fix them on a base plate to prevent them from warping later on with the resin because you'll get an exothermal reaction and shrinkage might be possible and I want to have my molds like in the best possible shape as possible um, after curing into the oven and after adding the resin. So I'm using the VAC cast resin. So it's an aluminum filled epoxy resin. Um, Easy Composites now sells it under another name. Uh, you'll find it into the description down below if interested. So the good things about this uh, resin is that you're able to pour it in like bigger volumes. It's more stable and it can withstand higher temperatures. So after one day, I've noticed that they are cured enough and then they are going into the oven to create like a higher TG value. So it means they can withstand higher temperatures and are more stable at those higher temperatures. So I've also printed another tube. So this will be to cast with silicon. So I'll be having a, a silicon core while making these, so in the composites industry, this is called um, silicon intensifiers. So these will like expand under heat, create pressure, and also leave you like with a good finish on the inside and outside. So you'll get good dimensions, um, and it's an easy uh, step to reproduce once you have those silicon intensifiers and your molds. So I'm putting everything on a base plate again. So sometimes you might think, is it that important? Uh, mostly like you will move the parts. It's easier to have it on a base plate um, and having uh, it easier to fill with the silicon that I'm mixing at the moment. So I've also used this silicon in another project. Uh, you can see it on the top right. It's making a lithophane uh, of a Charizard card. If interested, have a look at that video. So it's important to use a platinum cure silicon or an additive cure. Um, like they will have different names for it, but it's important to have like a good silicon to make uh, these intensifiers because they have to withstand higher temperatures. They may not leak too many silicon oils and they should have like a low hardness. So they have to be very flexible. Um, so that's why I've used uh, this silicon here because it's easy to mix. It has a low um, structural, like um, they are very flexible and that will make it easier to remove them later on. So I've added the aluminum tube in the middle. You'll see later on why. So this will add some pressure while the intensifier is, in, is into the mold, but also will make it possible to remove it at the end. Because the shape of the part is uh, with a di diameter of 40 in the middle, so it's a circle, but the edges are squares. So otherwise I wouldn't be able to remove it if there wasn't no flex on this, um, silicon intensifiers. So these prints were done using um, phase mode, fast mode or spiralized mode in Cura um, just to have like the best finish on the inside. If interested in those topics, you can watch that other video of me um, about the Ender 3S1 and spiralized mode to get good 
3D prints um, without having seams because it's printing in one go. So here I'm able to remove the bolts thanks to the release agents and the nuts are stuck on the inside. So this will enable me to add some side plates on uh, these molds later on. So I'm using some TPU filaments. Uh, this will form like, first of all, uh, registration keys. And second, this will avoid epoxy resin leaking uh, through that seam, like trying to contain as much epoxy on the inside instead of like using the pressure to remove all the epoxy resin from the carbon fiber filament that will be on the inside of these molds. So this being like uh, a PLA with some ABS properties, it's easier to sense than um, PLA, it's less fluffy. And I was able to polish it till like a good gloss. So I, my main purpose, purpose wasn't to make like high gloss molds. First idea was just to 3D printing and then just remove parts from it. But I tried uh, polishing them with good results. Um, leaving me like more things that I know now about these filaments. So here the side plates are added, just like a test fit. And now it's time to add the release agent. It's very important to use this. Otherwise your epoxy resin will stick to your 3D print and you won't be able to remove it at the end. So now for the carbon fiber parts, I'll be using some epoxy resin. So it's the EL2 uh, laminating epoxy resin from Easy Composites with some fast hardener. So here are the braided sleeves. So I'm not using like the regular carbon fiber. So this is like uh, woven into one tube. So it's quite interesting to see how these are, are made. Um, try finding it on, on YouTube. It's pretty like amazing to see how these things are being woven. Um, so I'm using a 3D print to like position the parts to some test fittings. Uh, the edges are bent to the inside to have like a nice finish uh, on the edges. So you could also leave the carbon fiber strands out and cut them at the end. But I think this will give you some better results. So this is why I did it that way. So once everything was like pre-shaped, I put it onto the silicon mandrel, so the intensifier, and now it's time to add the resin. So I'm just using a brush. Um, I just mixed a small amount. I think 20 grams uh, was enough. Uh, just put it onto the, the dry carbon, add some on the mold as well, just to have like, to make sure that enough resin is onto the part and the mold, but not too much because you don't want to have too much resin. Otherwise everything will drip out of your mold and you might not be able to close the molds. So um, that's why I did it this way. So now the side plates are being added. This will add some pressure on the silicon. And yes, to save you from the comments, I'm using some Vaseline to add it to a shaft and put it into a small hole um, of silicon. So I've, I've said it, so you don't have to leave it in the comments. Um, but this will add some pressure on the silicon and make sure that's enough pressure or should be um, on the carbon fiber against uh, that 3D printed mold. So everything is then put into the oven. So a good thing about like intensifiers mostly used with pre prick is that under a high heat, silicon will expand and add some pressure um, onto your carbon fiber, like in cases pre prick against your mold. So this will create the pressure instead of having to use vacuum bags and so on. So it's easy to do like bigger productions without having to use vacuum bags. So this is why this is like a cool technique to use. So the part is removed. So now the tricky parts, will I be able to remove the intensifier, so the silicon core? And yes, so thanks to having that aluminum rod that kept some space on the inside, I was able to remove it um, from the part. So here I'm just quickly cleaning the part. Um, so I had some pinholes and bubbles. So Two options are here now, or I make a new intensifier with a higher diameter, or I just add two layers of uh, braided sleeve. So uh, I went for the easy way here, uh, adding two layers. It will add some knowledge that I can use later on. Um, and here you can see we get much better results. So um, the intensifier is a bit harder to remove, um, but here you'll see like the results coming out of uh, the mold 
with this part having two layers we get less bubbles and a better finish so here's the tube and then later on i just sand it um, the last one with two layers so this is the one i'm holding right now this one was the bad one that i fixed so i'll be showing you that in the next tutorial how to fix like problems onto your carbon fiber or any parts you have um, just to be able to recover them and get some good results so if you like this video make sure to leave a like comments make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with future videos and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching